Hey guys, Chris Date here for CG Tuts, and in this tutorial we're going to be modeling a high poly RPG launcher and rocket. And as you can see, this is a fairly complex model. Um, there's a lot of pieces to it. It'll be about 82 by the time we get it finished, and uh, lots of small little details and screws and bolts and all that stuff. Um, there's also quite a few holes cut into it. Most of these band pieces uh, have holes cut through for the screws, so we'll be working with subdivision quite a bit on some of the smaller pieces, and uh, we'll have to utilize a lot of different tools and techniques to get everything built and uh, put together properly so uh, a good portion of it's going to be done with edible poly work but uh, we'll also be using splines quite heavily on some of the pieces okay so I wouldn't necessarily say it's for beginners but I'm going to try to really make a point of explaining it the best I can just to make sure that uh, everybody that attempts it gets a good result when they're done alright and it's going to take us quite a while this will be about a 10 hour tutorial and if you look over here, um, you can see pretty much the order that we're going to do it in. All right, so a lot of pieces again. Um, we'll start with the rocket uh, launcher first, and uh, we'll build the simple pieces to get them out of the way. So we'll do the heat shield, the breech, and the barrel first, and then we'll just kind of work our way along, adding all the details as we go. All right, so we'll do the brackets here. Um, these are a little more complex than they look from this angle. Uh, there's holes cut through there, and we'll have to make a fairly detailed screw and bolt for that. Alright, so we'll do those guys. We'll get the uh, bracket back here on the breech and another screw on there. Then we'll move down and start working on the uh, two handles. All right, we'll build the rear one first and then we'll look at a way we can uh, modify the, that and repurpose it to get this handle here. Okay, then we'll add the little pins and all that stuff. And we'll move up and start working on the uh, trigger housing piece. And uh, this will be done pretty much mostly with splines just because it's a weird shape and there's tons of holes cut into it for all these screws. Uh, and there's more holes on the other side. All right, so we'll do that. Then we'll add the trigger, the hammer, build in these bands here that hold on to the barrel. Then we'll move back and do the uh, the mount for the optical sight. And again, that's spline work and some added poly. Uh, and then we'll start working on the scopes. So we'll do this guy first, build in the sight, all that stuff. Move down to the end of the barrel here and build the uh, iron sight just to finish it off. Okay, and with the launcher done, we'll move down and start doing the rocket. And that's going to be pretty much mostly uh, poly work. Um, we'll build the motor first, add the uh, screws and washers and all that stuff, and then we'll build the warhead, add the uh, little fin details, and then we'll move down to the end and add some of this detail stuff. There's some holes cut into the shaft and uh, so forth. Add that, we'll add the stabilizer fins, and then we'll finish the whole thing up by adding the uh, rear offset fins at the back here. Okay, so it's going to be a bit of a journey, but uh, we should get it done and I'll be using Max 9 for the tutorial. If you're using a newer version of Max, uh, that's fine. You shouldn't have a problem following it. If you're using an older version than 9, as long as your version supports uh, ring loop connect and inset, you should be fine to follow it. Okay, so let's jump over to Max and get started. Okay, so here we are in Max, and I think the first thing we're going to want to do is just set up some sort of a blueprint so we have something to work against. Uh, just because this thing is fairly complex and has a lot of pieces, so it's definitely going to help to have something in the viewport that we can actually see while we work. Okay, so let's do that first. So I'm just going to go over to the create panel and grab a plane. Alright, I'm just going to drag it out in the left view. It doesn't have to be any particular size. Just get one in there. And I'm also going to check and make sure it's centered to the origin, so I'm just going to right-click on the move tool and just right-click on each of these spinners to zero them all out. Okay, and I'll just snap it to the center of the grid. Alright, and I'm just going to uh, set up my scene here quickly. So I'm going to turn off my grids with uh, G in each view. Turn on my smooth and edged faces, F3 and F4, in each view. Okay, and let's also turn off the selection brackets here by hitting J. Okay, and I'm also going to change my uh, mesh color to black. Alright, that's just all personal preference. Um, if it doesn't bother you having the grids on or the selection brackets, you can just leave it. Alright, so for our blueprint plane here, we don't need all these extra segments. Let's get rid of those. So I'm going to go into the uh, Modify panel and just take the segments down to one by one by right-clicking the spinners. Alright, and before we adjust the size for it, let's actually open the uh, blueprint uh, image into the material editor. Okay, so I'm just going to hit M. And we'll choose a new slot, and I'm just going to open up the map box for the diffuse channel. Alright, and we'll choose bitmap. And I just have one saved on my desktop here. Alright, this is the one we're going to use. Uh, it's not ideal um, to use as a blueprint because it's fairly small and the resolution is actually pretty bad, but I couldn't find a better one, so we're going to have to make do with this. Alright, so before we open it, I just want to uh, note the size. And you can see that down here, 700 by 271. Okay, so we'll take note of that and then open. 
and we're just going to change the size of our plane to match the size of the picture. Okay, so let's go over to the uh, modify panel, and we'll do uh, 271 on the length and 700 on the width. Okay, just to match our picture. All right, now we can turn on show and viewport over here, hitting the little cube, and just drag and drop our material onto the plane. All right, just like that. And let's take a look in the left view. All right, now as you can see, it's you know not fantastic. Um, and if we get in really close, you can see it loses its uh, quality pretty quickly. Right, pretty nasty looking. All right, so I think we'll just use the print as you know a guide to the sizes and the placement of all the pieces, and then we'll rely heavily on our reference images to actually figure out what everything looks like, all these little details. All right, and another reason this isn't uh, fantastic is because you can see it's got a slight bow in it here. It's not perfectly straight. All right. And ideally, you'd like to have that perfectly straight, but uh, I think we can make it work. All right, so I'm just going to go out into the top view and uh, turn on my grids again with G. All right, and I think we're going to build our model at the origin, but I want to have the blueprint out of my way, so let's just pull it over to the right and move it out of the way. All right, just want to have it block in our view while we're trying to work, so let's move it over. I'm also going to name it just quickly. I'll just call it blueprint. All right, and let's freeze it as well. Okay, so I'm going to go into the display tab, down to uh, display properties in that rollout, and we'll just untick show frozen in gray. Alright, that way we'll, when we freeze our uh, image we'll still be able to see it. Okay, and let's open up the freeze rollout and just hit freeze selected. Alright, just so we can't move or select our piece uh, by accident while we're working. Alright, All right, so let's go back to the left view. Okay, so like I said, this thing has a lot of pieces, so I think we'll try to get the major ones out of the way first. Um, so we'll build in this piece, okay, and then I think we'll just work our way down, adding all the little detail pieces as we go. Okay, so I'm going to start up here on the uh, wooden heat shield piece. All right, we'll do that first. All right, so I'm just going to jump into the front view, and I think for this piece we can just start with uh, a cylinder. and. Uh, just another note, when you're working with something uh, that you want to use blueprints for, it's obviously you know ideal to have more than one image to work from. And if you ever model a car from blueprints or anything else, you'll know it definitely pays to have you know multiple views. Um, and we only have the one, so it's going to be a little more challenging. Ideally, I would have liked to have had a side, you know, a front, back, and top view. Definitely would have made it easier, but uh, we'll just have to make it work. It's just going to be a little harder. Okay, so let's jump into the front view. All right, and I'm just going to choose a cylinder. All right, we'll just drag one out here. It doesn't matter where and what size it is. Just give it a little bit of height. Let's jump into the left view. All right, you can always uh, maximize your viewport windows by hitting Alt W. Okay, let's zoom in here, and I'm just going to drag this up into place. All right, just so we can judge the size we need. Okay, so we'll stick it up here somewhere. All right, and let's uh, open up the modify uh, panel, and I'm just going to tweak the radius a little bit. All right, so it fits the uh, image better. We'll say 24 or so on the radius. Height doesn't matter. We can just leave that because we're going to move it manually. All right, we don't need the height segments either, so let's get rid of those by taking them down to 1. All right, and for the sides, uh, it's at 18 by default. Um, I think I'm going to go quite high on the sides because I want to try to avoid subdividing this piece if I can. I think we're going to have to use it fairly heavily on a lot of these little bracket pieces, so... I'm going to try to do the main portion uh, without subdivision. Okay, so let's pump the sides up fairly high. All right, maybe like 60. Okay, and that's quite a bit. Um, but I just want to make sure it's going to have a nice smooth result when we're done. All right, so we'll do 60 sides. And let's go back to the left view. All right, I'm just going to change my color here. Put on my gray shader. Just sign a default one. All right. And you can also use X-ray mode here um, with Alt X, so you can see through your piece. As you can see, my video card's pretty lousy, so you can't really uh, see much through that. So I'm just going to leave it solid. Okay. Let's convert it to edible poly. Right-click, convert to edible poly, and let's just go to vertex. And I'm just going to grab all these guys on this side, and we'll just move them over past that band piece. All right, we'll stop right there. All right, and then let's stretch this side out. Grab all these guys them down. All right, I'm just going to stop at the uh, part where it starts to taper. Okay, and let's go to Polygon. All right, I'm just going to drag a selection around the end here, and then hold Alt and deselect the sides. All right, just so we have the cap piece selected. All right, this guy here. 
And I think for this we can just bevel this polygon, so let's open up bevel. Alright, and we'll just raise up the height. Alright, I'm gonna stop where it starts to flatten out. Alright, and we'll lower the outline amount to match the angle a bit better. Alright, let's say maybe 21.5 on the height and negative 5.5 on the outline amount. And OK. Alright, and let's extrude it down to the end. So open up extrude. And I'm just going to hit OK here. And then just drag that polygon down on the X until it gets to the end. And as you can see, you know, the angle on the picture is pretty bad, so we're going to kind of have to guess where this stops. So I'm just going to stick it maybe right there. Alright, we're probably not going to get this to match uh, our image very closely, but uh, it should be okay. Alright, so just do it like that. And then uh, for this end up here, it looks to me on the blueprint like that kind of bevels in a bit. So I think I'll open up a reference picture and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, so I'm just going to go into the Utilities tab and open up the Asset Browser. Alright, I just have a bunch of them saved here that I found online. And uh, I'll include these and the blueprint um, on my website if you want to download them so you have them to work with. Alright, and it's uh, chrisstateonline.com and you can find the uh, pictures in the uh, tutorial section. Alright, so I'm just going to find one where we can see the end of that piece. Alright, so... And again, you know, my reference pictures aren't fantastic either because they're fairly small. But I think we can see, you know, good enough. Alright, so let's just take a look at the end here. Right, it's kind of hard to tell. It looks like it might have a slight bevel on it, so let's do a little bit of one on the end here. So I'm going to go back to the Modify panel to Polygon and just grab a, a selection around this end, hold Alt, deselect the sides, and let's just bevel that piece out. Alright, so bevel. Lower the height. I'm going to stop right where the barrel starts. Okay, maybe about six or so, and let's raise the uh, outline amount up. I don't want it to be that steep. All right, we'll do it pretty slight. All right, maybe negative uh, 0.88 or so, and okay. Now let's take a look in perspective. All right, so just like that. Okay, so for the end ones here, I'm just going to uh, select this polygon at the back and open up a reference picture again. Alright, so on here you can see there's some thickness to that wood, so I'm just going to see if I have an angle of the other end of it. Alright, so back into the Asset Browser. Alright, so you can see it here. Alright, it looks fairly thick, okay, so I think what we should do is probably inset those polygons on the end. Alright, so back to the Modify panel to Polygon, and I'm just going to do this one here. Alright, so I'm open up Inset. Alright, and let's try maybe three or so on the amount. Alright, that looks pretty good. We'll say OK, and then let's go around to the other side, the front, and do the same thing. Grab that polygon, inset. All right, I think I'll just do three here as well, and OK. All right, so we could probably just delete the end uh, polys here and leave this thing hollow, because you probably really wouldn't see it, but uh, I think I might just punch it through, just in case. OK, so I'm just going to select the one at the back again, and we'll go into the left view for this, because it's probably going to be a little easier. All right and into wireframe view, F3. Okay, so I'm just going to push the polygon all the way through and I think I'll try to just kind of match the shape we have going on the outside. Alright, so let's extrude. Open that up. Alright, I'm just going to take it down to a negative amount and push it through. Okay, I might try to kind of match my edge loops on the outside. So I'm going to stop right there. So negative 123.5, say, and OK. And let's just zoom in here. All right, you can also just move these manually. Alright, so let's bevel this one. So we'll do a bevel. Alright, just move it down, negatives. Okay, I'm just going to match that edge and then up the outline amount to match our angle. And again, this might not be, you know, completely necessary. You could just leave it uh, hollow. Alright, so say okay on that one and let's extrude one more time. Alright, down to the end. I'm just going to say okay and just move this manually. Alright, we could bevel it here, but I think I might just drag this all the way through and stop at the very end. Okay, just like that. I'm just going to try to kind of match these edges up. Alright, and let's go into perspective. I'm just going to hit Z to zoom in. Okay, and the first thing I do is just delete that polygon from the inside by hitting delete. Alright, and I'm going to select this one here. All right, you can see it doesn't totally match our edge, so I'm just going to go to scale and just scale it up really slightly. Try to match that uh, edge we had coming from the inside. All right, it doesn't have to be perfect, just close like that, and we'll hit delete. Okay, and then let's weld that up. So let's go to border, and 
just make sure you don't have back facing turned on here. I'm just going to drag selection around and get both those borders. It should be 120 edges. And we'll control click vertex to convert the selection to verts. Okay, so 120 verts, and let's open up weld. All right, and we're just looking for a difference of 60 here, which we have. If, if you don't see this number drop, just try upping your threshold and then hit OK. All right, and you can see we have 60 now, so we know they all welded. All right, so just like that. All right, so let's exit vertex, and we're going to have to soften up some of the edges on this piece. Um, I think I might just do a save quickly. All right, so let's uh, file, save as. I'm just going to make a new folder here, call it RPG. Save a copy. All right, so let's look at our reference again. All right, the ends look like they have uh, fairly hard edges. All right, it's pretty soft in the center. All right, so let's go to edge, and I think we'll just do the ends first. All right, so I'm just going to zoom in here, and I think I'll do the inside and the outside at the same time. Again, it might not be necessary to really do this inner edge because you probably wouldn't see it anyway, but I think I'll do it just to uh, be safe. Okay, so select both those guys and do a loop, and we'll open up chamfer, and just lower the amount down. Right, I want it to be fairly uh, hard. Right, maybe uh, 0 0.35 or so should be good, and we'll hit OK. And then let's just do this guy while we're at it. Alright, so we'll loop chamfer. It might go up a little bit on this one. All right. It's going to be covered up pretty much by the band anyway, so it doesn't have to be perfect. We'll just say 0.4 or so on that guy, and OK. And let's go down to the other end. And again, I'm going to do the inside and the outside. And loop. OK, and we'll chamfer. And I'm just going to do these 0.35 like the uh, front ones, just so they match. OK. And let's go down to the center. Alright, we're going to have to soften these ones up uh, quite a bit. So I'm going to grab one and control click another edge there on both those loops. And I think I might actually do the inside ones as well. Um, again, it might not be necessary, but uh, I think I'll do it just in case. OK, so kind of awkward here. I'm going to come in from the other side. It's probably easier to see. Right, we'll just zoom in here. Alright, so I'm just going to control click these guys as well, and we'll do a loop. All right, just so we have all four loops selected on the inside and outside. And let's go into the left view. Okay, hit F3. All right, so with those guys selected, let's just chamfer. Okay, and for these ones, I'm going to go up quite a bit. All right, we just want to smooth out the transition here. So I might do about two, and then I'll hit Apply, and then we'll do a double and lower this amount down. So maybe one on the second amount, and OK. All right, that should be good, I think. Let's check it out in perspective. I'm just going to exit edge and hit Z. All right, you can hit Z at any time to center your uh, viewport on what you have selected. All right, so that's not looking too bad. I think we're probably going to have to smooth this out if we turn off our edges with F4. Yeah, it looks kind of rough here kind of fauceted. So I think what I might do to fix that is just throw the smooth modifier on and we'll try that. Okay, so let's go into the modify list. All the way down to smooth. Put one of those on and I'm just going to try auto smoothing here. So we'll take this off. Okay, and you can see it uh, fixed the problem. Alright, it looks nice and smooth. Alright, so that should do it for the heat shield piece, I think. Alright, so let's just name this thing. Alright, I'm just going to call it heat shield. Pretty sure that's what it's called, I'm not positive. Okay, and let's center the pivot point on it as well. So I'm just going to open up the hierarchy tab, click effect pivot only, click a center to object, and then click effect pivot only again to turn it off. Okay. All right, so that should be cool for that piece. So let's save one more time now that it's done. All right, so I think we'll start working on the breach piece here uh, next, and then we'll do the barrel. All right, so let's go into the uh, front view. All right, I think we can start with a cylinder again for this piece. So let's just grab one on the create panel and drag one out. All right, and we'll just get one in here, and then we'll center it and uh, figure out the size we need. Okay, so I'm just going to go in here into the perspective view. All right, and it's inside our other piece, so I'm just going to move it out so you can see it. 
Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is just center the pivot on it. So let's go into the hierarchy tab again. Effect pivot only, center object, and turn it off. Alright, and we'll just use the align tool here to line it up. So let's uh, click that on and just click on the heat shield piece. Okay, and for this we just want to have X, Y, and Z ticked. And pivot point and pivot point. And okay. Alright, so that's going to align it properly to the uh, heat shield piece there. Okay, so let's drag it down on the Y to where it needs to be. Okay, and we'll figure out the radius we need. I'm just going to take a look at our reference again. All right. This one here. Alright, so a, there's a fair amount of that wood exposed. Okay, so we're going to have to shrink the radius down a bit. Alright, so with the modify panel, I'm just going to lower the radius down a bit. Alright, let's say maybe uh, 16.5 should be good. Okay, the height doesn't matter because we're going to move it manually. And I think I'll leave the sides at 60 on this piece uh, as well. Okay, so let's go into the left view. Alright, I'm just going to move it over so it's uh, sitting up against the uh, end of that piece. Okay, and let's convert it to edible poly. Right click, convert to edible poly, and let's go to vertex. Alright, I think we'll just do this piece pretty much the same way we did that one. Okay, so let's grab all the verts on the left side and just drag them out on the uh, X axis. Alright. And we're going to kind of have to guess where the end of it is because our picture is kind of uh, whacked out there. Okay, so we'll just drag it over here maybe. Alright, to get the taper on it, I think I'm just going to scale these verts up. So let's go to scale and just scale on the triangle. Alright, we'll just go up. And we're not going to be able to match the picture, but I'm going to try to match maybe the angle down here. Alright, maybe like that. Should be fine, I think. I'm just going to change my color here quickly. Alright, throw the gray on. Alright, so just like that, and let's select that uh, back polygon on the end there. Alright, I'm just going to take a look at the reference again, see if you can get a look at this thing. Alright, that one's not going to work right now. Let's try this one. Alright, so it looks fairly simple. It just kind of flares out into this edge back here. Alright, so let's bevel this polygon. Right, open up bevel. Okay. For the height, maybe I'll do like 5 or so. And I'm just going to up the outline amount so it goes in the right direction. Alright, let's just say maybe three, just to make it easy. And we'll hit apply and do it again. And I'm going to leave it at five for the height and just go up a little more on the outline amount. Alright, let's say 4.5 or so. And hit OK. Alright. And then we're going to have to build in this uh, edge detail here, so let's do that. I'm just going to scale this down a bit so we can uh, keep it up in the corner. Alright, so let's extrude. Alright, and we'll just lower this down. Alright, and let's do maybe uh, 3.5 and OK. Alright, and we'll go back into perspective. Alright, so let's start building in the actual hole here. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is just inset this. Alright, so let's open up inset. And we'll go up on it quite a bit. Right, let's say maybe uh, 8. That looks about right. And we'll hit OK. Alright, and I'm just going to minimize that. And go back to the left view. And into wireframe again, F3. Okay, and I'm just going to repeat the process we used uh, on the inside of this piece. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do if that polygon still selected is just extrude it. Okay, and I'm just going to go and put a minus in the amount. And just hit enter. Okay, just so it'll reverse it and match our edge there. Alright, let's hit OK there. Alright, now I'm going to bevel it. Alright, so open up bevel. Take the height down to a negative amount. Lower the outline amount. Alright, I'm just going to match the angle we have on the uh, outside there. Alright, select so like that maybe. I'll hit apply. Do another one. Alright, just like that. And then we'll do another one. Apply. I'm going to take the height way down, get all the way up to the uh, other end of it, and then just lower the uh, outline amount. Alright, I don't think we need to match the angle uh, necessarily on this piece. You can kind of see where we push the inside of our heat shield piece in there, so I'm going to kind of try to match those edges. Alright, so say like 7.25 or something, negative, on the outline amount, and OK. Alright, it doesn't have to be anything exact. You're never going to really see in there anyway. Alright, so just like that, and let's exit Polygon. And I'm just going to go into Isolation Mode here with Alt-Q, just to hide everything else. Alright, so that's not looking too bad. Let's go around to the front. Alright, back to Polygon. Okay, and with that one still selected, I'm just going to delete it. 
OK, and then we're going to grab the uh, polygon on this end and just inset it to it matches uh, this loop here. OK, so inset. Right, just take the amount down. Right, try to get them to match. Right, looks like about 1.4 or 1.5 should be good. All right, we'll hit OK, and I'm going to delete that with Delete. All right, and then we'll just weld this up uh, the same way we did previously. OK, so let's go to Border. Select both those borders. Again, you should have 120 edges, and then we'll control click vertex, open up weld, all right, and this should snap. Uh, if not, just try th upping the uh, threshold a bit until you see a difference of 60 here. All right, so we'll hit OK, and we can exit vertex. All right, so let's just take a quick look. All right, that looks pretty good. All right, we are going to have to soften up some of the edges, but the first thing I do is just save. So let's go to Edge, and we'll just do these. All right, so I'm going to go in on the front end here and just grab two edges there, loop, and let's just chamfer these down. All right. I'm going to keep this edge fairly hard. All right, maybe 0.2 should be cool, and OK. Now let's go down here to the back. All right, I'm just going to open up a reference again. All right, it's got fairly hard edges on the back here. OK, so. Let's uh, grab these two guys on the outside, those guys there, and I think I'll do the two inner ones at the same time, so control click these two guys, loop, alright, we'll just do all four of these loops at the same time, so chamfer, alright, and for this I'm going to go up a little bit, still want it to be fairly hard, so we'll do point three or so, and hit OK, and then let's do this guy here, and the one on the inside of it, that guy. Okay, and chamfer. All right, I'm just gonna take another look here. It's kind of hard to tell, but it looks like uh, the edge is fairly sharp there. All right, so maybe we'll do point three on this one as well, and okay. All right, and then I think I might try to smooth this out a bit. So let's grab this one and the one on the inside of it, holding control, loop. All right, and I'm just gonna go into the left view for this. Hit F3. Okay, and I'm just going to try to smooth the transition out here uh, as well, so let's chamfer. Alright, and we'll go up on this quite a bit, just to smooth things out a bit. Alright, maybe uh, 2.45 or so, that should be cool, and OK. And we'll go back to perspective. Alright, and we can exit edge. Alright, just going to take a look here, and I think we're going to probably have to put the smooth modifier on here as well. Let's check it out with F4. Yeah, it looks pretty faucited. Okay, so let's throw the smooth modifier on this guy. Right, it's the modify list down to smooth and auto smooth. Okay, just to smooth things out a bit. Alright, that looks uh, decent. Okay, so let's name this guy. And I'm just going to call it breach and center the pivot point on it. Alright, so hierarchy tab, effect pivot only, center object, and then turn it off. Alright, and let's exit isolation mode and take a look. Alright, so it doesn't look too bad. I have no idea what the inside of this thing would actually look like, so I'm just going to leave mine hollow. I right, guess you're not really going to see it in there anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Alright, so it doesn't look too bad. Let's do another save now that that piece is done. Alright, and we'll start working on the uh, actual barrel up front here. Okay, and I think it's going to be pretty much the same process uh, on that piece that we used on these guys. Alright, so I'm just going to go back into the front view. Alright, and we don't need the breach in here right now, so let's select it and just right click and hide it. Hide selection. Alright, so for this I'm going to use another cylinder. Alright, so we'll grab one on the crate panel and just drag one out here. Alright, and we'll figure out the size of the sec. Let's just give it a bit of height. Alright. Just going to uh, move it out so we can see it. Okay, and again, I'm going to center the pivot first. So, hard tab, effect pivot only, center an object, turn it off. And then the align tool again, let's turn that on and click on our heat shield. All right, and again, it should keep your same settings as before, but if not, just make sure you have all three of these ticked on and pivot point and pivot point. And okay. All right, so let's move it up to the front. All right, looking a little small in the radius right now, so let's go into the modify panel. I'm just going to look in the left view. 
going to be kind of hard to tell here because it's not really going to line up too good. Um, I'm just going to go up a bit on it. Alright, we'll say maybe uh, 21.4. That looks pretty close to what we need. Okay, and I'm just going to leave the height. Uh, we'll do that manually again. And uh, we'll leave the sides at 60 as well. Okay. Alright, so in the left view, I'm just going to right click and convert it to edible poly. Okay, and yeah, same deal here. We'll just go to vertex and grab all these verts on this side. Alright, just make sure you don't have back facing turn on when you do that. And I'll just drag it out up here. Okay, and I'm going to stop again where it changes direction. It starts to taper. Alright, and let's just change the color. And again, this is just personal preference. You don't have to use gray. You can use uh, whatever you like. Alright, so let's go to Polygon. And again, I'm just going to grab the whole end of it. Hold Alt, deselect the sides, and then we'll just bevel this uh, cap piece. Alright, so open up bevel. Alright, 10 looks pretty good for the height. I'm just going to lower the outline amount to match the angle we have there. All right, maybe negative uh, 5.75 or so, and OK. And then we'll do an extrude. And I'm just going to hit OK here, and we'll just drag the polygon all the way down to the end of the barrel. Alright, just like that. All right, let's take a look at perspective. Just going to hit Z. All right, so you can see what we're doing. Alright, so that looks pretty good for the shape. OK, so let's go into isolation mode one more time with Alt Q. Alright, and I think we'll just do the, the same thing on this. Let's inset the end uh, first. I'm just going to see if I can find a picture of how thick the barrel looks. Alright, can't see anything on there. Or that one's really no help to us either, so I'm going to close those and I'll just open up another one. Alright, so back into the Utilities tab, into the Asset Browser. Alright, let's see if I can find a picture of the end of it. Alright, there's one there. Alright, so the metal looks fairly thin. Okay, so let's go back to the modify panel to polygon. And with this N1 selected, I'm just going to inset it a bit. Alright, we'll say 1.5 or so, and OK. And let's go around to the other side and grab this guy, and we'll just do the same thing inset 1.5, and OK. Alright, and now chances are you would see inside this um, at some point, maybe when you render it, so we'll just push this through, just like we did before. Alright, just play it safe. Alright, so let's go into the left view into wireframe of F3, and just extrude that polygon again. Hit OK, and then just drag it down. Alright, I'm just going to match my uh, outer loops again, and then we'll bevel. Take the height down. Just gonna adjust the angle slightly. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then we'll say OK. And now let's do one last extrude. So open up that, hit OK, and just drag the polygon down on the X all the way to the end. Alright, I'm just gonna line it up with the tip. Alright, just like that. Okay, let's zoom in here. Alright, so same thing here. I'm just gonna delete the inner one first. Delete. Alright, I'm going to grab the one on the outside here, and again, I'm just going to go to scale and scale it on the triangle and just make it match this uh, edge loop we have from the inside. Okay, so we'll go up a little bit, just until they're close to touching, and then we'll delete it. And then, once again, we'll go to border, grab the borders, control click vertex, open up weld. Alright, they should snap, if not, just up your threshold again. Alright, looking for a dif difference of 60, so that's cool, and we'll say OK. Alright, we can exit BERT. Alright, so that doesn't look too bad. Alright, before we soften up the edges, let's save again. Just gonna grab another look at the reference here. Alright, so the edges are fairly hard again. Alright, you can see they're pretty tight there. Okay, so let's go back to edge, and we'll just grab these guys on the end of the barrel. Alright, the inside and outside, and do a loop. Alright, and chamfer. Alright, we'll just lower the amount down. Alright, I might go maybe 0.25 or so, and then I'm going to hit apply, and we'll do a double here. And lower the second amount down a bit further. Alright, so maybe 0.1 on the second amount, and OK. 
Alright, let's go up here to the uh, other end and do the same thing. Grab these guys. Loop. Chamfer. Alright, I might do these singly. I'm just going to go up a bit. Alright, maybe 0.25 on these guys and OK. And then we'll do the center ones. Right, so I'm going to grab the ones on the outside holding control and I think I'll do the ones on the inside again just in case. Though it might not be necessary. Alright, so I'm going to zoom around here to the inside and just control click these two. And loop. Alright. And chamfer. Alright, let's go up a little bit on these guys. Maybe 0.35, and that should be good, I think. And OK. And exit edge. Alright, so I think we'll need the smooth modifier again, so let's turn off our edges with F4 and C. Alright, yeah, same problem. Okay, so let's just put the smooth modifier on this guy to finish it up. And auto smooth. Alright, so that doesn't look too bad. Let's exit isolation mode and see how it looks with everything else. Alright, doesn't look bad. Alright, it's pretty simple, but uh, that's fine. Alright, so let's uh, name this guy. I'm just going to call it Barrel. And center the pivot on it. Arc tab, effect pivot only, center an object, and then turn it off. Alright, so let's unhide the breach. I'm just going to unhide all. Right click. Alright, so it's not looking bad. Uh, you know, these are the simplest pieces of the whole thing, but uh, not looking bad for a start. Okay, so let's save.